Hello, this is Mark Galliotti on a snowy red square, which seemed a suitable place to talk about the relationship of the Kremlin with organised crime in Russia. Now, often this is described as a mafia state. What does that actually mean? I must say I don't like that formulation myself. I think it uh, conceals more than it reveals. Does organised crime control the state? No, absolutely not. If anything, they have had to come to terms with the fact that Russia's current ruling elite are much more predatory kleptocrats than they could possibly be. To put it bluntly, the state is the biggest gang in town. But does this mean that the state, the Kremlin, Putin, the security services or whatever, control organised crime? Not really. This is not a country in which actually the mob is run from the government. Rather, it is that Putin has created, in the midst of his, in many ways, self-created geopolitical struggle with the West, a mobilisation state. His view that any individual, any institution can and should feel that when the state needs it to do something, it does it or else. And this applies to, to businesses, this applies to media outlets, and it also sometimes applies to organised crime. From time to time, and I wouldn't want to make this as being more than it actually is, but from time to time it is clear that, for example, Russian-based organised crime groups operating outside the country, particularly in Europe, have been required to do things for the state and for the intelligence agencies. Maybe it's move a little bit of money into this black account or that that then they can use to support some populist or divisive political movement. Maybe it's actually just to, to kill someone, as we've seen, for example, with Chechen fundraisers and supporters um, in Turkey. The bottom line is this. When Putin came to power, he offered organised crime a social contract of sorts. Don't do anything that is an overt challenge to the state. And that means none of these sort of drive-by shootings and car bombings, which is how they had been resolving their disputes in the 1990s. Or sending money to the Chechens, or anything like that. If so, then obviously we will treat you as enemy of the state and, and come down on you very, very hard indeed. However, if you accept the rules of the game, if you accept that the state is ultimately dominant, then you can carry on your crime. And yes, the police will try and continue to catch you, but in a way, the game will be allowed to continue without the state deciding that it needs to put extra measures into dealing with these, the way, for example, it deals with terrorists or political dissenters and so forth. This is the deal. You do your crime, realise the boundaries that the Kremlin has set, and from time to time do the Kremlin favours, and everything will be fine. I talk about this more in my forthcoming book, The Vori, Russia's Super Mafia, out from Yale University Press in April in the UK, May in the United States. I hope you take a look, I hope you buy it, I hope you read it and enjoy it. But for now, Mark Galliotti from Red Square, thank you very much.